Hello and welcome to this video where today we're looking at the ultraviolet catastrophe as part of the turning points option for AQA um, A-level physics. So these are the three main things that we need to know about the ultraviolet catastrophe. So the ultraviolet catastrophe concerned things called black bodies So and black body radiation. So we need to know what black, a black body and what black body radiation is. We need to know what the ultraviolet catastrophe was and why it was given this particular name. And then also we need to know how the ultraviolet, ultraviolet catastrophe was solved and why this was particularly important. Um, so you'll remember when you were studying infrared radiation at GCSE you will have learnt that black matte materials are the, both the best absorbers and emitters of radiation. Now we're going to be thinking about the amount of radiation that's given out by a certain object and we're going to be thinking about something that is, almost, is basically a perfect emitter of radiation and if you're if an object is a perfect emitter of radiation it's called a black body simply because it means that it's given out virtually all of the radiation and black materials are the best emitters of radiation um, examples of black body rate black bodies are for example stars stars are virtually perfect um, black body radiators because they don't they absorb if you shine basically if you shine radiation onto them they absorb all of the radiation um, none of it is reflected and none of it is transmitted by the star it's all it's all absorbed but then the all of the radiation that, that it basically generates is then re-emitted as well um, so stars are perfect virtually perfect black body radiators and so we've kind of mentioned what a black body is here's a definition of it so a black body is defined as it basically it's a body that is a perfect absorber of radiation so it absorbs all of the all of the radiation that's incident on it and it therefore emits all of this so all of this radiation as a continuous spectrum of wavelengths so in other words it gives out all virtually all of the different wavelengths that it possibly can do um, what's really important is that the radiation that a black body emits depends upon the temperature of the body, as we'll see very, very shortly. So this is a definition that you need to learn for your exam. But in terms of understanding it, we're simply thinking about things that can emit lots and lots of different wavelengths of light. And the, the amount of a certain wavelength that it emits depends upon the temperature of it. So... What we can do is we can, we can look at the radiation that certain objects give out. And as we've said, the radiation depends upon the temperature of an object. So let's take, for example, a light bulb. A light bulb is something really easy to, to kind of think about. So you here's your light bulb and you connect it to your circuit. And what we do is we gradually increase the current going through it. It'll start off and it'll start off and it'll start to glow. So it starts to emit some radiation and it'll start to glow red because there's not a huge amount of um, current flowing through it. And so it, it emits some radiation, but it, it'll only be in the kind of red part of the spectrum. As you increase the current, it'll start to go orange. So we'll, you'll all have seen, for example, um, if a light bulb does this or alternatively, if you heat metal up, it goes red and then it goes orange and then it starts to glow yellow and then it starts to go kind of whitish as well. So um, what's happening is basically the radiation that's it's given off um, is going down in wavelength. Now it gives off lots and lots of different wavelengths of light but the main colours it gives off dictate the colour that we see. And this kind of these curves kind of show you what would happen if you took for example, a black body. So a light, a light bulb's not really a black body, but if you took a black body and you split it up into the different wavelengths and looked at how much of each wavelength of light was emitted. So the intensity is related to essentially how much of this how much light is emitted at each particular wavelength. So you can see when a black body is has a temperature of 4000 Kelvin. Um, not very much light is given out at really, really small wavelengths and not very much light is given out at really, really big wavelengths. In actual fact, the peak is here. So the peak's just outside the red part of the spectrum. So you, you'd see, basically, you'd just about see this thing glowing red because most of the light it's giving off is a red colour. If you then heat it up, so you've then heated it up by another 1,000 degrees, the peak part is now getting closer and closer to the orange part. So you'd see this 
as a red orange type of glow so the radiation that's given off is now more orangey and if you heat this thing up even more it's now become yellow so you've gradually heated it up more and more and more and the wavelengths that you've seen go from red to orange to yellow simply because most of the radiation that it gives off are those particular colors but it is giving off lots of other types of radiation as well so that's actually what we see so that's what you see if you were to plot um, the the rate the intensity of radiation as a function of the wavelength for different temperatures so this was first ever measured in around about 1899 and it caused a massive problem and the main problem it caused is because the theory at the time didn't agree with it because as everybody knows um, light is basically a wave and wave theory predicted that the intensity should increase as the wavelength decreased in actual fact it went it went like lambda to the minus four. In other words, um, the intensity is proportional to one over lambda to the power of four. So as the wavelength gets bigger, the intensity should get should basically get less, and vice versa. So this red line shows what wave theory would predict, and obviously it can't. It's not showing this whatsoever because there's no peak and it doesn't then fall back down again. So at low wavelengths, wave theory predicted that the intensity actually becomes infinite, which kind of breaks the law of energy conservation as well. So wave theory just couldn't it just couldn't get this to work at all. And in particular it can't it can't just explain these peaks. Now the main discrepancy was in the ultraviolet region because you could basically have some really high temperatures and, and wave theory could maybe predict something like this. It couldn't predict what was happening inside the ultraviolet region, which is this part here. So that's the reason that it was called the ultraviolet catastrophe. Um, basically, the discrepancy between theory and experiment was in the ultraviolet region, so it was termed the ultraviolet catastrophe. So lots of people then started to do some work on this. And in the end, Max Planck, the guy who's who we know about Planck constant, Planck's constant H, he in the end he came to the rescue. Now uh, we're going to go from this from a from an exam board point of view. Actually, in 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 proper historical terms, Max Planck didn't really care about this, and um, he was doing some completely different work. It's just that um, the work that he was doing um, when they applied it to this seemed to work. So, um, but we're going to go from the exam board point of view. Um, where they're basically saying that Max Planck was the person to solve this, or even though really he wasn't. So um, what he said is he said, okay, and so what we've got is we've got a black body and it's made up of all of our atoms like this. And we know as we heat these things up, then they start to vibrate more. And actually the electromagnetic radiation that's emitted by your body is related to the energy that the atoms have got. And if the atoms have more energy, they vibrate more. And as they vibrate more, that some of that energy is then radiated away um, as um, the electromagnetic radiation that we then see. So Planck suggested actually that what, rather than this being a continuous thing, energy is actually emitted in quanta, um, and that this quantum of radiation, in other words, bit of radiation, so rather than it being continuous, it's a bit of radiation, is related to the frequency of the radiation, and the energy of the quantum is given by this. So basically what Planck said is that rather than light being a continuous wave, it's actually really made up of, of discrete parts. Um, so basically it's made up of photons, although he didn't call them photons. Einstein did quite a lot later. So basically Planck solved this, this particular problem by saying that light is made up of particles and not as waves. And that's the reason that this is really important. It was basically the first step into quantum mechanics and it's the first step into saying light isn't a wave, light's actually a particle. So in terms of the ultraviolet catastrophe that's really all you need to know. You need to know what a black body is and know how to define it. You need to say what you need to be able to say what the ultraviolet catastrophe was. So basically that wave theory couldn't if you draw your graph again, if that's wavelength and that's your intensity, wave theory couldn't predict this particular peak here and the drop off as you went to very small wavelengths, it actually predicted curves that look like that. And it's given this name because the discrepancy between wave theory and the actual experiment was in this region here, and this is the ultraviolet region, UV. Um, it was then overcome, or it was solved by Planck, basically by saying that um, light 
is really light is essentially a particle is what he said really um, he didn't really say it was a particle he said basically the electromagnetic radiation came in in quanta or discrete packets um, where the energy of each of these packets is equal to HF so that's they're the two things that he basically said so um, that is the ultraviolet catastrophe in a nutshell um, you simply have to know these three things and then be able to answer some exam questions that are basically going to ask you based what the ultraviolet catastrophe is and how it was solved okay so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again soon